Hey guys, this is Tyler Zombro with Tread Athletics, and today I wanted to take some time to talk about natural biases when applying force to the ball. So in pitch design in today's world, we're always looking to manipulate the ball in different ways. Uh, and sometimes we get lost in terms of what is actually sustainable versus what is not. And what I mean by that is certain guys favor different positions. Certain guys favor tighter elbow flexion. They favor supination. Other guys might be a little wider uh, in terms of not getting into a lot of elbow flexion and they might favor pronation. There are just so many variables that you have to look at um, when going into these decisions. And in doing that, we try to really optimize what's best for each athlete. So I wanted to roll through a couple of those scenarios today uh, and talk about what we've done in a lot of these experiences. First guy I want to talk about is Sean Armstrong. Uh, so Sean is a big leaguer uh, for a number of years. He is a guy who heavily, heavily favors supination, thus cutting the ball. Now, the thing is for Sean is he actually feels more comfortable when he's outside of the ball in terms of applying force to it. So he's thrown hard his entire career when he's cut fastballs. The issue becomes if we were to tell him, hey, let's get behind the ball a little bit better, make the spin more efficient, promote more vertical break, he gets into a position where he's not applying the same amount of force to the ball as he was before. Thus, velocity is decreasing. So in that scenario, what can we do to ultimately optimize his arsenal and get something that's going towards the arm side? This is where seam shifted weight comes into play. So that's something that we're frequently talking about. I know Turner Givens loves this topic as well. And it really gives guys the opportunity to apply maximum force to the ball while just utilizing aerodynamics to make the movement happen. So in Sean's case, something that we're always looking at is if somebody's between, we'll call it 70 to 90% efficiency, you have the opportunity for seam shifted wake. So while he is really good at applying force to the ball on the outside, favoring that supination, he's also a guy that strides cross body, has a little bit of a later trunk. When he applies force there, we can allow him to do that in the exact same manner, but just altering the grip now gives him sinker movement. And this is something that he's going to be adding to his arsenal. And we have already seen in bullpens that it's pretty incredible the results he's seeing. So that's, that's a manner in which Sean is really good at applying force in a certain way. And so we're gonna allow him to continue to do that and kind of work around it. There's of course guys out there who can apply force to the ball perfectly behind it. Those are the guys that can spin it very efficiently. They can carry the ball well, while also still throwing hard. I know Ben talks a ton about pushy arm actions as guys chase carry. And that's something that we're always gonna be on the lookout for because we wanna make sure the manner in which they're applying that force to the ball is optimal for their body. The other scenario that we can run into is guys who actually favor being on the inside of the ball. So if you're a guy who maybe you throw a ton of change-ups, you have an early trunk, now we're getting into a scenario where you've become more comfortable applying force on the inside of the ball. So in that situation, uh, we know that as we add or decrease efficiency, that there are corresponding velocity adjustments. Uh, if somebody favors being on the inside of the ball and I try to get them to throw a drastic sweeper and heavy supination, they probably can't do it at the same velocity as somebody that already has that bias of supination. And those are things that we always have to remember as we try to design a guy's arsenal um, for his career, or season moving ahead, whatever that timeline may be. So again, everybody's gonna be a little bit different in this regard. Uh, we also have to look at, of course, stride direction, uh, anatomical makeup, early or late trunk. Um, there are so many things with an early or late arm action that can factor into this as well. But again, looking at how the guy naturally applies force to the ball can really tell you a lot about where he's comfortable. And then you can work backwards to really make his arsenal work around that. Let us know in the comments below what your experience has been like with this. Where is your natural bias with how you apply force to the ball and how has it affected your career or what discoveries have you made within that? Thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.